Today, I'm gonna teach you a little bit of color theory. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about color, which is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna show you some stuff that you never knew about color. Today's episode is divided into two parts. First, we're gonna talk about some ideas behind color theory, what it means to actually use colors in different combinations with each other and finding the best combinations of colors to use together in a photo to make your images actually come out a lot better. And then we're gonna take you beyond the theory and show you guys how to actually do everything in Photoshop. So if you didn't capture the exact right colors straight out of camera, you can alter your colors in Photoshop and make everything blend together perfectly. Just, just like that. <laughs> All right. So the first thing we're covering is how colors actually work together with each other. And I'm gonna show you this image because it's a great example of complementary colors. This is an image in a series called Beetle Beauty that I did. Well, you might like or hate this image, that's totally beside the point. But you can't argue with the fact that the colors look amazing on it. And that's because the colors we use here are complementary colors. We've got the green here in the beetle matching with this really nice magenta in the lips. And those two colors play off one another. These are what's, what are called complementary colors. So how do you know which colors to use in your images to make sure that they are complementary? And for that, we're gonna use a color wheel. Now, in the old days, you had to use a physical color wheel, but Adobe actually put online, this is an awesome, awesome website, it's just color.adobe.com, and this is basically the color wheel. Now, I went ahead and changed my color rule to complementary here, because this is what we're working with, complementary colors. Now, you can take any of these points in the slider and move them around and see how your complementary colors work. So we can see that here, I've got like a really nice version of green and a really nice version of magenta that matches pretty closely with what I've got in this photo. So we can see these are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And anytime we have color that's on the opposite sides of the color wheel, those colors are gonna go great together. So here, another couple combinations we've got are blue and yellow. We can see the difference right there. And then we've got there we go, red and green, those are always gonna look good together as well. So if you guys are just starting out, stick with complementary colors, it's super easy. Basically just pick opposite colors on the color wheel, like red and green, and put those in your image. For instance, if you had someone wearing a red coat in the middle of a green forest, a little bit like Little Red Riding Hood, then your image is going to look great. Because you've included those complementary colors, you're gonna be sure that your image is gonna be a little bit more interesting and that your viewer, the person who is actually looking at the photo, is going to look right at Little Red Riding Hood because she's going to stand off from the green background. All right, so what happens if you wanna use more than two colors in your image? Well, let's get a little bit more complex. I'm gonna change my color rule right down to triad. And there we can see these are three colors that are going to play well. Now, I can click here and move these colors around, and these are colors that are naturally going to go, go together well. One of the most common triads to use is actually going to be red, blue, and yellow. And those colors you can see over and over and over in artwork. Keep your eye out because red, blue, and yellow is a very common theme that many photographers and stylists use to create a really nice color theme through their images. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. We've got a red, yellow and blue, and different variations on these are totally okay. You can click here and say, I want you know either closer towards green or closer towards yellow. Now, it's totally up to you as far as like what you actually want your colors to look like, but in this case, this looks like a pretty good set for me. I'm, I'm happy with these colors. So what if I took an image and I didn't have exactly these colors and then I wanted to make sure I had colors that actually work together well and do that in Photoshop? All right, that's what we're gonna show you how to do. So I'm taking these colors. This is blue, red, we've got another variation of blue, and then our yellow here. So what I'm gonna do is just take a really quick screenshot of my image here. So on a Mac, I'm gonna hit Shift, Command, 4, and then I'm gonna click and drag just to create a nice screenshot. There we go, of our background. Now we're gonna load this into Photoshop, and I'm gonna show you guys how to select colors in an image and make sure that they actually flow into the colors that we just chose in our color wheel. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop to see this at work. All right, so here in Photoshop, we've got our base image. This is a stock image from Photolia.com, but it illustrates our principle perfectly. We've got almost these triadic colors here. And here's the screenshot we just took from Adobe. So what are we gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and move this into our other document. 
OK, so now we've got our screenshot here. Let's hit F to full screen. And you know what? I'm just going to transform this. We're going to make it quite a bit smaller. Basically, I'm going to use this as a color picker. So we're going to choose some colors from here and actually make them apply to the colors that are in our image. Now, this isn't 100% necessary. You don't have to do this with all your images. The point being that if you want to make sure that you are including the exact right colors to make a triad or complementary colors, you can use the color wheel online and then take those colors and then place them into your image in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and start off with this skateboard because it is red, but it's a little bit more towards the magenta side. So what we're going to do, I'm going to create a new layer on top of our background here. Let's go ahead and make everything else invisible. And I'm going to go to Select and then down here to Color Range. There we go. Now, I've got a little eyedropper here, and I'm just going to click right here on our board. Let's go to our preview as grayscale. So it's basically going to show whenever I click on something, that's when it's going to get selected. All right, now light areas are going to be selected, and dark areas are not selected. Let's go ahead and hit this plus eyedropper, and I'm going to go ahead and add to my selection. There we go. So I really am selecting all the magenta that's in that board. Let's hit OK. So there we can see. You can see it's a really nice selection, and it's not selecting you know, any of the dark outlines. It's not selecting the blue or anything like that. So now that we have that color, I want to change it to the exact red that's in my color wheel that we just chose. So let's go ahead and make our color wheel back visible. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool, or you can just hit B for the brush tool, and then hold Alt or Option to sample a color. That's what I always do. So we're actually going to sample this color from the screenshot that we just took. So we're taking this exact red. All right. Now, on our new layer, with our selection active, basically all I'm going to do is fill with this color. So we're going to hit Shift Delete, which is our fill dialog, and I'm going to say Use My Foreground Color, because in this case, I've chosen that red as my foreground color. So it's going to use foreground color, which is this red, and it's going to fill it in this selection. So let's hit OK. And there we go. It did just that. I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. So now this is exactly that red. But you can see it's just one solid color. If I move it around and stuff like that, it, there's no shading or anything like that. It, it doesn't look like it's got any dimension. So what we need to do is change the blending mode of the layer. So from normal, I'm going to change this all the way down here to color. And when I change the color, it's going to change it to this color, but we're still going to get the shading, so it's going to look a lot more real. All right, and that's really all there is to it. We're going to keep on going with other colors. So let's create a new layer. On this layer, we're going to go ahead and select out the blue. So I'm going to go to Select, down here to Color Range. And now I want to just select some of the blue that's in her jacket. And you can bring your fuzziness up if you'd like to select a little bit more. If you find you're selecting too much with your fuzziness, just bring that down a little bit, and then just use your plus eyedropper instead. There we go. And I'm going to bring my fuzziness down a little bit more, because I really only want to make sure it's selecting those jean jackets. Sweet jean jacket, bro. <laughs> All right. That's it. OK. Cool. So we actually did wind up selecting a little bit of the background. Not a huge deal, because I'll just use my brush tool instead of the fill dialog. So let's go ahead and make this back visible again and hit B for my brush tool. Now I'm going to hold Alt or Option and sample this color. So we're actually, remember, we're sampling colors from our actual color wheel here. And now, instead of just filling everything, I'm going to paint with my brush tool. I'm at an opacity and flow of 100%. And I'm just going to paint right over top of our jean jackets and our jean shorts. All right. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to paint right over this blue right on there as well. OK. And then we'll hit Command D to deselect. So you can see we have the same issue we had earlier. It just looks totally flat. So we need to change our blending mode. It's a normal right now. We're just going to go down here all the way to color. OK. Now, it's super saturated here. So these are ideas that we're actually using the colors from the color wheel, but you don't have to use them at 100% opacity. You don't have to be so saturated. So it's not a problem at all. If I just want to take my opacity and drag it down a little bit to make it look a little more realistic, that's not a problem at all. You can do that anytime you want. All right, that looks great. We just got one step more, and that's to turn the background into a nice yellow so we really have that triad of colors working together. All right, so let's create another layer. And on this layer, I'm going to go to Select. We're going to go down to Color Range. And then I'm going to click right here on our background. There we go. Now, I'm going to hit this plus eyedropper and make sure that these bricks are selected. Let's bring our fuzziness down, because I really don't want, especially the grout, like the area in between the bricks, I don't want that to be visible. So let's make sure we click on these areas. 
All right, that looks pretty good. Now you can see a, a little of our subjects. They're actually you know, going to be selected as well. Remember, the light areas get selected. The dark areas do not get selected. So a little bit of our subjects is going to be selected. That's not a huge deal, because we can take care of that with a layer mask. So let's hit OK. All right, we've got our selection. We'll make this back visible again. Now we're going to color sample this yellow here. All right, and on this layer, I'm going to hit Shift Delete, and we're going to fill this again using our foreground color. There we go. That looks amazingly awesome and straight out of the 80s. All right, let's go from normal down here to color. All right, looking a little bit more natural. And I already know I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit just because it's like uh, kind of insane right now. All right, now let's just put a quick layer mask on here. And basically, all I need to do is paint black on my layer mask wherever I need to. Now, in this case, we're using a little bit of a com complex example because we have so much that's going on in the background with all the tile work and everything like that. So we do have to use just a little bit of a layer mask because it, you know, it did select areas like in her hat, in her teeth, in her face. You know what? I don't mind it so much here on the top of the hat. So we're actually just going to leave that. All right. But it's probably a good idea to get the yellow out of her teeth because it looks disgusting. All right. So we're just basically painting black on the layer mask right over top of where our subject is. And this is not taking too long. It's just a really quick job here, just making sure that this color is not visible there. All right. And if there is any touch up work that you guys need, like let's say that you know your fill misses a spot or your selection misses a spot, it's not a big deal. Let's just zoom in here real quick. I'll just take care of the shadow. It's not a big deal to just grab a new layer, paint with just a regular old brush tool, and now I'm going to change this layer blend mode from normal down to color as well. And basically, I'm just going to paint right inside there. So you don't need to make advanced selections. You can just use your brush tool and then paint. That's not a problem at all. All right. Now, I did a really quick job here with my layer masking because I wanted to show you mostly about color theory, not so much about using a layer mask. Let's go ahead and zoom out. All right. So we've got our colors. Let's go ahead and take a look at our color wheel. We've got our red, which is right here in the skateboard. We've got the blue, which is in the skateboard and also in our jackets. And then we've got the yellow here in the background. And you know what? The yellow is still a little bit too much. So I'm going to lower the opacity just a little bit there. All right. And there we have our complementary colors. Let's go ahead and group those. And let's take a look at the before and the after. So here's our before. This is straight out of the camera without any color adjustments. And here's our after. And we can see how well these colors actually do play together. And it creates like a really nice, fun image with a lot of bright colors, but they're not competing with each other because these colors work together very, very well. All right, and that's the whole idea behind color theory. It's choosing colors that are actually going to work well and then placing those colors in your photo. Whether you're placing them physically, like actually placing objects in your photo that have those colors and those colors are gonna play together well, or whether it's doing it here in Photoshop after the fact. The whole idea is getting colors that work well together in the same image. Cool, and that's it for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching Flurn. I super duper, duper duper appreciate you hanging out with me and learning some color. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you wanna get free Photoshop and photography tutorials every single week, all you gotta do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Super easy, just click on the screen right now and we'll subscribe you up and then you'll just get more of these free ones. They'll just they'll come straight into your life. You just will love every second of it. <laughs> if you have an idea for a new episode or a question about today's episode, please leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Hey, guys, and welcome to Flurn. Hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Find me on Flurn.com, where we make Photoshop and photography. <laughs> Dang it, I almost had it. <laughs> so in case, all right, so there are a ton of colors out there. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on the Flurn.coms. On the fl <laughs> So when you're working with. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whoo, man. Those colors are good looking together. Dang. Little Red Riding Hood was a Brothers Grimm fairy tale, and everybody knows the Brothers Grimm are huge fans of complementary colors. That's why they invented Riddle Red Abiding Hood. The end. That's not true. Don't believe what I just said.